...ons and everything, uh, the Mother's Day run going on today. Good job being here on time for those of you who are here, and I'm sure some of you uh, spoiled your moms today as well. So why don't we all stand up? We're going to take some time today to celebrate moms, whether they're here in person or watching online, moms who have maybe already passed on but have just been so incredible in raising you and raising their families. The Bible actually talks about God as being like a mother hen. And so whether or not you are here with your mom today or you have a mom, or like I said, she's passed on, God is everything that we need, right? He is our heavenly father, but he is also able to have that special mom touch and that mom hug that we all need sometimes and give us that mom encouragement. And so we're excited today to just worship this God that we serve. He is so worthy of our our praise and our worship. And so we're going to start by singing a song called, I Could Sing of Your Love Forever. So I hope that you'll join us today. praising and worshiping God.
sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. He rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Of our praise, 
let there be no higher name Jesus Son of God You lay down your perfect life You are the sacrifice Jesus Son of God You are Jesus Son The cross was enough, the cross was enough, the cross was enough, the cross was enough. On the altar of our praise, let there be no higher name, Jesus, Son of God. life you are the sacrifice Jesus Son of God on the altar of our praise let there be no higher name Jesus Son of God you lay down your perfect life you are the sacrifice Jesus Son Jesus, Son of God, yes, you are Jesus, Son of God. God, we thank you that you are the perfect sacrifice. We thank you, Jesus, for why we're here today, what this is all about, to worship you. Thank you that you paid the price on the cross for every single one of our sins sins that we committed years ago, sins that we may have committed this morning. God, we just give those back to you right now. We don't want to hang on to those things. God, we don't want to be drugged down by those things. God, we don't want to be heavy. God, we just want to give all that baggage and that luggage to you today, God. We pray, Lord, that you would lighten our spirits today and that we would be able to praise you and give you the worship that you deserve. Amen. We're going to actually sing one more song and it's called Old Church Choir. It's another fun one. So we hope that you'll get into it with us. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, do a little jig, do whatever you want to do.
declaration today that no matter what we're going through, no matter what's going on at home or at work or at school, there ain't nothing that's going to steal my joy. Can you guys say amen to that? Amen. Sometimes you just have to determine that in your heart. I'm going to focus on the Lord. I'm going to focus on what he's done for me, and I'm not going to let the things around me steal my joy. So we're going to have a few people come up and do announcements in just a moment, and why don't you watch this a Mother's Day video I'm mixing the schedule all up on them. So we're going to play this mother. Oh, we're not going to play it because it's not working. So Naomi and Kojo, why don't you guys come up and just give us some of our announcements. And worship team, we can actually go down. We're going to do some Mother's Day things. Hi everyone, welcome. Good morning to you all. You, you all look lovely. It's good to see you again this week. Um, and yeah, I, li I like that it's almost packed here today. So we're just going to give a few announcements today. Uh, there's a lot on the schedule, so we'll, we'll try to be brief. Naomi? Um, so your May calendars and notes on the water baptism are available. Um, all notes are on the table at the back of the church there or out by the fountain in the foyer. And uh, speaking of notes, we still have the note on the purpose and importance of church membership. If you haven't been able to grab a copy, you can grab, a, you can grab one outside, right? Uh, same place Naomi described, on the tables out there or in the foyer. Don't worry, they're free, so just grab it and then have a look through. Um, be, the reason we want you to do this is because next week, Tuesday, God willing, we have a meeting at 7 p.m. about church membership. And it's for anyone at all, whether you are a member or otherwise. If you want to learn more, if you want to find out more, that's the place to be. So we hope to see you all there. Thank you. Tithes and offerings, um, you can give via the offering plates at the back of the church on your way out. Um, there's Interact in the office, in the church office here, or e-transfer to christianfellowshipns at gmail.com. And... On tight basis, uh, now from there we go to the annual church business meeting, uh, which is next Sunday, May 16th at 6 p.m. We have a lot of meetings. It's exciting. It means there's good things happening. Um, anyway, so uh, the business meeting is kind of different from the membership meeting, as you've, you've gathered. Um, it's, it's our way of being accountable to one another here. So if there's any questions you've ever had about why is that podium like that, you could probably come ask it over there. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, yet more meetings, prayer meetings, um, they continue regularly on Saturday evenings here at 7 p.m. and Wednesday mornings for anybody who can make it. Uh, we also have the Fusion Youth, our young people, on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. And then for the toddlers, um, next Saturday there's a kids event for them. So that's from ages 3 or 4 here at the church. And it's going to be with up to three or four. Oh, okay. Everyone, nice. Um, so that's going to be with Joanna. And it's Saturday, next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Uh, usually there's a lot of treats and pizza. So see you guys there. Um, yeah, now the meeting. No, this is um, for anybody that can help out in the churchyard. We're in need of people uh, raking, picking up sticks. Um, and leaves, if you can get them into piles. We do also have a wheelbarrow for anybody who's really keen. Um, <laughs> anybody that can come, basically, any time, or contact the church office and find out if there's a group of people coming. All that's right. it? Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Just to clarify, we're supposed to have the membership meeting this coming Tuesday and is now been bumped to next Tuesday. 
we hope to have the church business meeting next Sunday and that meeting on Tuesday. The reason for this is because Pastor Bruce has the shingles. So that's why we're bumping some things. Um, and many people, you know, have COVID and stuff. So let's just take a moment to pray for our pastor and anybody who in our church or you might know people who are sick today, we believe that God can heal. And we are going to pray for a fast recovery. And right after this, we're going to invite the kids to come up and do something for Mother's Day. God, we thank you again for Pastor Bruce and Marlene. God, just the way that they love, they father this house, they mother this house the way that they love us and serve us. And we just pray right now, Lord, on their behalf. God, we ask Holy Spirit that you bring healing to Pastor Bruce's body. I know that this is painful. I've never experienced it. I don't want to. But God, we pray, Lord, that you would take this pain away. God, we pray for quick healing. God, we know that you can heal. We know that you are powerful. We know that you can do something way better than medicine can do, even way better than doctors can do. In just a moment, God, you can bring supernatural healing. So we pray for him. We pray for other people in our church or maybe some of our families and friends who are dealing with COVID and different things. God, we know that we are not above the sicknesses and things in this world, but you are. And so we pray, Lord, that you would come down to earth and meet us, meet these people where they're at today, if they're at homes, if they're in hospital bedrooms, wherever they are, God, we just pray for a supernatural touch. God, we pray for miracles to happen right now, even testimonies to come out of this moment that 11 o'clock on Sunday, things started to clear up. I started to feel better. I started to breathe better. And so, God, we just ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to invite all the kids to come up. We're gonna try and figure out how to play this video. Our system's um, not working. So why don't all the kids come up while we're figuring that out? All kids up to like age like 11, if you were here on Friday night especially. And if you have a little kid with you, like an infant, why don't you come bring them up too? We just wanna see all their cute faces today. And if you have no idea what's going on right now, but you're a kid, come up anyways. It's going to be really easy. We're going to do a little Mother's Day song. We actually had a great time on Friday night with a, a bunch of the kids. There was, I think, 25 at least here. And we did all kinds of games. We did worship songs. I see a bunch of kids back there that don't want to come up, but you should. Come right up here, right up on stage. Trust me, I'm scared to be on stage too. Come on up anyways. Come on, you can do it. Be brave. Make yourself at home. Get comfortable. <laughs> come on up. A few of you come stand over here. A few of you come stand over here. Come on up, Jalen. Come on up, Lydia. You come stand up here with them. All right, so. She's not going to get up there today? <laughs> All right.
What a great job, guys. Why don't we give them another hand? Good. You guys are all so super cute. Well, good morning, moms. Happy Mother's Day. I hope a few of you got a few little treats this morning. I'm a mom of two teenage girls, so gone are the days of homemade uh, noodle crafts and uh, painted pictures. Um, it's now my appreciation of how they look out for me, how they keep me current, especially with my clothing. Uh, I'm sure it's mostly because I, uh, they wouldn't want me to embarrass them, but uh, I love you girls. So we'd like to honor a mom today, and that's Miss Marlene. She wasn't able to make it here today, but I know she's probably joining us online. Um, but she's not only a mom, but a grandmother, but she's also the spiritual mom of this house. And so uh, I'm sure a spiritual mom to many here. And so we honor you today, Miss Marlene. Thank you for your investment of time with people, your prayers, and in your encouragement. And we pray God's richest blessing on you today. Maybe we can just give her a round for the blessing that she is. <clears throat> I just want to take a moment to uh, encourage um, you this morning. Um, especially moms, maybe moms who are in waiting, maybe some grandmothers here, and uh, also for spiritual moms and some mentors here. And, uh, you know, today may be difficult for some, for some different reasons, but I want to remind you today that no matter what season of life that you're in, you're exactly who and what your children need. What other moms have or do does not have any bearing on you or your abilities. Let me remind you that there is value in everything that you do. What you do today can make a difference for tomorrow. Who needs that reminder today? I know I do. God says that you are unique. You're loved. You're special. You're cared for. You're lovely. You're precious. You're strong. You're important. You're forgiven. You're protected. And you're chosen. He has a plan and purchase a purpose for each one of us. Jeremiah 29, we all know that scripture in uh, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I'd like to pray for the ladies and honestly, it doesn't matter what generation is represented. You know, moms, sisters, daughters, young ladies that are coming up. Why don't you just stand with me so I can pray with you this morning? This is for all of us. Lord, thank you for these precious ladies. Thank you for the blessing that they are to their families and to those who they are in contact with, whether it's at the playground, the office, the grocery store, or even at school. We ask that you would instill in each of us godly wisdom. Lord, we ask that you would increase our influence. We pray that you would give us creative ideas, passion, and strength for each day. Help us with a desire to spend time with you, to love your word, and to trust you in everything with everything that we have. Lord, help us to be the young ladies, moms, grandmothers, spiritual moms and mentors that you've called us to be. Lord, thank you that you are fulfilling the purpose that you have for each one of us. In your name, amen. Bless you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Oh. Hey, Welcome kids, to church. We're going to send you guys down over this way. And if you're a Sunday school teacher, come join them. If I wasn't doing 10 things at once, I would have introduced Vicki. But uh, many of you probably already know Vicki and Jeff. They've come up from the Rock Church with their two girls to help us out again today. So um, why don't we just give them a welcome, Jeff and Vicki. Good morning, everybody. It's Mother's Day. I've got to grab my Bible. Look, we're spread out all across the front like seven seats here. There we go. Why don't you turn around and say hi to somebody today? Say, say, hi to, say hi to a couple people. Let's get a bit loud. There you go. Yes, we're in church. This is family. Now say hi to a mom. Find a mom and say hi, mom. You are appreciated. 
Amen. Well, as was mentioned uh, earlier, our prayers go out to Pastor Bruce and Marlene, and uh, I want to encourage you uh, to continue and keep them in your prayers. We've had friends and family who have had shingles, and it's not easy, uh, and it, it can linger. So we're really praying for, for God's best in their life. Amen? Well, I want to extend a happy... My, now, my wife told me not to do this, but as a great husband, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to my wife, Vicki, mom of our two kids. Uh, my mom, her name is Dolly, and my mother-in-law, Bonnie. Now, if I didn't say that, I would have gotten in trouble. So there you go. And all the other moms present today, uh, it's such an honor to, uh, to be here today on Mother's Day, which is a very, very important day. I don't know about you, but I grew up with two brothers, and my mom was the glue of our home, right? She was the glue of our home. Judy knows. Uh, and uh, as, as kind of mom ran the day-to-day and so forth, uh, we boys fell in line. So moms, you do an amazing job, and you're very, very important, and you're loved, absolutely. Well, I'm going to jump right into it today, and we're going to talk a little bit about walking in godly wisdom. I'm not going to be long. Uh, you don't have to worry about your turkeys burning or your hams drying out. Uh, I promise you we're going to be relatively quick, but I do want to talk about this. As I was preparing, I felt the Holy Spirit drop this into my spirit, and uh, wisdom is something that uh, is incredibly important in the life of a believer. And as we're going to kind of walk through, uh, it's important that we take hold of that truth within our heart. It's not a platitude, walking in godly wisdom, but rather it's a God-ordained plan for each of us. And we have a choice whether we want to choose to seek after godly wisdom or not. It's a plan that allows us to live a life of direction, protection, peace, joy, and contentment. Who wants that in their life? Does anybody want that in their life? I know I do. So let me just open up a prayer. Father God, we thank you for the awesome opportunity to come together to your house, Father, and to praise you and worship you. We love you. You're such a great Abba, and we give you all the glory today. I pray that every word that's spoken would be from you, and it would land on fertile hearts and take root in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm certain that there's not a parent in this room, I'm going to say mom, but mom and dad, that would want their child to grow up without wisdom. We all want that as parents. We all want that as people, right? Wisdom many times is associated with attributes like Success, intelligence, smarts, ability, etc. And in the right context, those are all admirable qualities. The question we have to ask ourselves, though, is this. Not only about our children, but also about ourselves as we do inventory. And as a believer, you should do inventory. From time to time, you need to take a deep look, right? We have to ask ourselves, what type of wisdom am I seeking out? The Bible is clear that there is a stark distinction between earthly wisdom and godly wisdom, and we need to seek out godly wisdom. Earthly wisdom appeals to the senses and the emotions. In contrast, the wisdom that is from God reflects Him. While earthly wisdom says, always follow your heart, godly wisdom tells us in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the heart is deceitful above all things. While earthly wisdom says, uh, seeing is believing, godly wisdom tells us in John 20, 29, that blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Faith. While earthly wisdom says, love your family and friends, godly wisdom tells us in Matthew 5, 43 to 47, to also love your enemies and bless them. While earthly wisdom says there are many ways to God, godly wisdom tells us in Acts 4, 12, there's only one way to God, Jesus Christ. Who would agree with me? Absolutely, there is only one way. So throughout the Bible, there is a call for believers to grow in the wisdom of God, and there's a vast difference between earthly wisdom and godly wisdom. I want to break that down a little bit today. I want us to take hold of that. I want us to leave here today with something not only in our minds, but our hearts and our spirits, something to wrestle with a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very, very important to work out your salvation. It's very, very important to consider things. In James 3, 13 to 18. This is what the word says. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. 
But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. Who would agree with me that there is a lot of disorder in the world today? Is there a lot of that? There certainly is. And what that basically pertains to and what Scripture talks about there is that man is seeking wisdom after his own heart. Man is seeking wisdom after his own mind and his own emotions. And we're called not to do that. We're called to something higher. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace-loving, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits. That's what we need in our life. Impartial, free of hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. We are called to be peacemakers. We're called to have the fruit of the Spirit active and alive in our hearts and our life. Amen? James understand that, uh, understands that there's a vast difference between earthly wisdom and heavenly wisdom. Earthly wisdom does not understand that heavenly wisdom is characterized by humility and meekness. All you have to do is read through the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. It talks all about that. The stark difference between how people with earthly wisdom convey their lives and how people who subscribe to godly wisdom convey their lives. It's very stark. Earthly wisdom finds its roots in jealousy and selfish ambition and is the result of an inordinate desire of things that do not belong to us or from a lust for power. Who would agree with me that we're living in a temporal world? What you see in front of you is not going to last forever, right? What you feel is going to change in a moment. We have to hold on to the eternal. In a word, the Bible sums up earthly wisdom as folly. And if you read through uh, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, that word is used a fair amount. The Oxford Dictionary defines folly as a lack of good sense, foolishness. Now, the biblical definition takes it a step further. Folly or foolishness refers to someone who lacks a proper fear or respect for God. It's a dangerous place to be. Lacking the, the proper fear or respect for for God. In 1 Corinthians 3.19, it says, For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness. So throughout Scripture, there's a contradiction presented between folly or foolishness and godly wisdom relative to how you live your life. Folly is a joy to him who lacks sense, but a man of understanding walks straight ahead. That's Proverbs 15, 21. In everything, the prudent acts with knowledge, but a fool flaunts his folly. That's Proverbs 13, 16. There is a stark difference. Now, the term folly in a modern context has taken on more of a lighthearted, kind of flippant context, connotation. In the biblical sense, however, it is anything but. Listen to what the Bible says about the danger of engaging and interacting in folly. Do we have any hunters in the room? Any hunters? Anybody hunt? Not one hand. Come on. There we are. Well, this will give you context anyway. Listen to this. Or not only that, anybody watch nature shows? That's more my speed anyway. Yeah, a few hands? Good. Okay. This will show you the danger of folly. Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool bent on folly. Now, that's a dangerous place to be, right? You don't want to be in that situation. So folly or foolishness or conducting your life in a way that is not godly and pertaining to godly wisdom, it's a dangerous way to go through life. Clearly, as believers, folly is something to avoid. When we act with folly, we revert back to the human condition. I can do it on my own. I don't need God's direction in my life. I've got it handled. I have my own dreams and desires apart from what God has purposed for me. And, you know, that is human nature, and we fight against that, and we have to lay that down daily, right? The Bible talks about that. So how do we counter folly in our lives? How do we gain godly wisdom? Well, firstly, gaining godly wisdom is not passive. It requires intention, and it requires pursuit. The Bible talks about this. It is not a spectator's sport. You don't float through life 
and obtain godly wisdom, you need to dig in. Discipline, intention, and pursuit are required. In Proverbs 22:15, it says, we are born with an innate foolishness. What that means is you don't have to work to be foolish. We're all born with that. That's part of our makeup. But discipline will help train us up in wisdom, and that's incredibly important. You can't float through life wanting God's best for your life with a case sarah sarah attitude. Whatever will be, will be. I'm sure it'll all work out in the end. That rarely works out. That's usually a, uh, uh, not a good thing. You have to work. You have to discipline yourself and train yourself for wisdom. Who would agree that it's easier to sit on the couch with a TV remote and a bowl of chips than it is to get up and put on your running shoes and go for a jog? Anybody? I know I. I yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of that, as you can tell, right? Especially in the wintertime. It's cold. It's much easier to sit on the couch. Now, who would also agree that the results from exercising are far better for you than the results of loafing around. Hey, anybody? Yeah, absolutely. So, so much like our physical well-being, our spiritual well-being requires effort. It requires intention, and it requires consistency. Let me tell you what it requires above all else. Relationship with Christ. Think about your relationships. Relationship with your spouse, perhaps coworkers, what have you. It takes work to flourish, and it's the same thing with your relationship with Christ. It takes some work. Is it worth it? Absolutely. But that is what is required. Our main text for the morning is Proverbs 2, 1 to 6, and it's followed by Proverbs 2, 7 to 10. And Proverbs 2, 1 to 6 is a passage full of action words. In fact, in this passage, the word if is used three times. If you accept, if you call, if you look. It's a call to action. I'm just going to Open my Bible here. Bear with me a second. I'm going to read from the Word of God today. Proverbs 2. If you have your Bible with you, turn there. If not, it's on the screen. We're good. Proverbs 2. We're going to read from 1 to 6. So, my son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. I'm going to read the rest of that after, but I want to stop there for just a moment, and I want to unpack that a little bit because it's incredibly important. The first portion says, Proverbs 2, 1 to 2, my son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. So much action packed into that. So much call to action. So many options within that. What option will you choose? My son, if you accept my words. The act of acceptance referenced in this scripture is to take hold of something already, sorry, readily available to us. That is the word of God. Who would agree with me that the Word of God is worth knowing? Anybody? The Word of God is worth following, adopting its principles into our life. We don't create, but rather submit to what is being offered. Through this acceptance, we choose to embrace life, and in doing so, let go of those things that are holding us back from our walk with the Lord. The operative word there is choose. We're all made with a free will. God made you with a free will. He made you with the option to choose, right? So we have the option to choose there. We relinquish our self-ambitions, our jealousies, and the disorders of life, allowing God to replace it with direction, protection, peace, joy, and contentment. Who wants that in their life? Anybody? I know I do. We effectively posture ourselves for a divine change when we accept God's Word, when we accept it as truth. The next portion says, and store up my commands within you. That's a call to action. The Bible speaks of the importance of retaining the teachings and commands held within. I'm just going to stop there for a second. If you're not reading your Bible daily, please start. If your Bible is not part of what you do, make it. I promise you it will change your life. It will radically change your life if you begin to read the Word 
and you begin to retain that knowledge because what happens is it's a living word, so it becomes living within you. It takes root, and then you get what's called revelatory power, which means you'll be walking through life, and you'll, you'll encounter something, and the Holy Spirit will bring that back to you, and you'll be able to take authority over it. Amen? It's important to do that. So the Bible speaks of the importance of retaining the teachings and commands held within the, the Word. As we accept the treasure of the teachings, we don't just read it and forget it, but rather dwell upon it and recall it with a thankful heart full of gratitude. How many of us are thankful for what God has done in each of our lives? Anybody? I can think time and time again of receiving blessings in my life that I do not deserve. Oh, there's three of them right there. I don't deserve that. God saw past my inadequacies, right? Thank goodness for his grace and his mercy. And he took hold of me, and I'm thankful for what he's done in my life. The next section says, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Now, that's a real action term. Turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Acquiring knowledge, especially the knowledge of God's commands, is a good and noble pursuit. We just talked about that. It's important. It's vital. However, living virtuously requires the application of that knowledge to our lives, not just the retention of it. We must begin to actively apply Scripture to our lives daily. I promise you, as you go through life, you will have opportunity to say yes or no. God will bring back, Holy Spirit will bring back opportunity, revelatory word, and then you have the opportunity to say, yes, I'm going to walk into it, or no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to encourage you today, walk into it, right? Apply God's word to your life. It'll change you. We must begin to actively apply scripture to our lives daily. In James 1, 22 to 25, it says, do not merely listen. I love this scripture. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Now, there's times I'm sure we want to look in the mirror, walk away, and forget what we look like. <laughs> Maybe first thing in the morning, right? I'm sure that's lots of us. But what, what James, what the author is saying here is that it's no good just to read and it's no good just to think about and say, well, that's great. I'm going to put that on the shelf because I've done my reading for the day and then go about your life as normal. No, we're to be transformed. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. It's incredibly important that we take hold of the principles and scriptures and teachings in the Word and then actively apply it to our life. That's where things happen. That's the catalyst. We need to let the Word become active and effective in our lives. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to convict us, allow God to work things out in our life replacing the bad with the good. Amen? And sometimes that can be an uneasy experience. Sometimes God's going to say, hey, look, I've got something special for you. I've got a new level for you, but I, I can't, you can't take that with you. That's got to be rooted out. You've got to take that out. And you have the option of saying, okay, Father, do your thing, or no, I'm comfortable where I'm at. Well, again, I want to encourage you today. Let Father God work on you. Proverbs 2, 3, and 4 says, Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, that's the next portion of our scripture. It's the same thing with regards to anything of enormous value, wisdom. Above all, requires that we invest our time and effort in searching it out. Very important. Proverbs 8.11 says, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Wisdom is the principal thing, it says in Proverbs 4.7. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. We're to search it out. We're to be intent. We're to be desperate about it. God loves a desperate heart. He loves when you cry out in desperation. He really does. He's there to answer. Proverbs 2 5 and 6, that next portion says, Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The first portion of that scripture says, Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. 
the fear of the Lord, the foundation of wisdom. How many would agree that a healthy fear of the Lord is lacking in our society today? Anybody? It's been said that communities used to get up on Sunday mornings and go to church. Entire communities used to get up and go to church. People you saw at the grocery stores or next to you at work would be seated in the pew beside you. Oh, how much that has changed. Gathering together to worship God and to encourage one another in the faith, in some instances, has been replaced with going to the market, exercising, or having a family day. Can I challenge you that your family would be better served in the house of the Lord than sharing another meal together? All those things are good in the rightful place. I'm not saying that they're not. They are in the rightful place. But when they begin to infringe on your relationship with God, then you begin to enter dangerous territory. The fear of the Lord is so important. The fear of the Lord can be defined as the continual awareness that our loving Heavenly Father is watching us and is aware of everything we think, say, and do. We are to be in reverent awe of His holiness, to give Him complete reverence, and to honor Him as the God of great glory, majesty, purity, and power. Who would agree with me? So important. The fear of the Lord is so important to be evident in our lives. Psalms 139, 2 says, You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. God is described as omni, omniscient, omnipresent. Um, he's, he's described as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, omnipresent. There's all kinds of words and verbiage around that. Ultimately, what he means is this. He's aware and he wants to be intricate in your life. He wants to be part of how you do life. He wants to lead you and guide you using his wisdom. Proverbs 9, 10 tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Basically, the fear of God is foundational to true wisdom. All other types of learning are worthless unless built upon a knowledge of the Lord Himself. That's not to say that learning in in this world is not important. It is. We all need to work. University is great, and so on and so forth. How do you apply that? Right? Are, you, are you following the leading of the Holy Spirit and doing what you're supposed to be doing? That's what differentiates us. The link between the fear of God and wisdom means we cannot possess wisdom if we recreate God in our own image. That is happening a lot in our society today. You know what? It's almost like a buffet. You know, so you're going down the buffet line. I don't like that. No, thank you. That doesn't agree with me. Not interested. But I love that. Yeah, that's great. I'll take some of that. That's not God. God does not want that. He does not want you to start to pick and choose aspects of his character to be evident in your life. No. He wants all of you. It's very, very important that, that uh, he's allowed to work within your life. But if we redefine the Lord as a God that makes us feel comfortable, a permissive friend who exists simply to bless us and give us what we want, we will not fear him in the way he deserves to be feared. Watered down. Watered down. My oldest daughter asked me the other day, hey, why don't they just print more money? If everyone needs more money, why don't they just print more money? Wouldn't that be great? I think they're doing that anyway. Uh, but it waters things down. It takes away the effect of something, if you water it down. It's the same thing with God in your life. If you start to pick and choose and add, you know, humanism and so forth, it waters down his, his impact, his effect, right? If you start to say, hey, God, you're okay in this part of my life, but not that part. No, no, no. He wants all of you. He wants the fear of the Lord to be evident in you. Until our hearts are in right relationship with God, we are unable to have the wisdom that comes from heaven. We must incorporate the fear of of the Lord into every moment of our lives. Every moment of our lives. We make decisions based upon His approval. We live with the knowledge that the Creator of the universe is intimately involved in our every move. How often do we lose context that He is the Creator of the universe? How often do we lose context that He created you? It was talked about today. Joanna, the kids did a great job. That was awesome. And one of the, one of the uh, lyrics talks about the fact that He knit you together in your mother's womb right? He knows you intimately. He's got plans for you. Those plans succeed when you basically give things over to Him. So to circle back to the beginning of the passage we've been reading from, this is what it comes down to. 
submitting to the authority of God's word in our life and accepting his sovereignty over us. Dwelling on the truth of the scripture and applying those truths to our lives. And in doing so, continually seeking him with our whole heart. That leads to the understanding of the fear of the Lord. This in turn allows us to walk into the wisdom of God. Read your Bible. Pray. Give things over to God daily. Talk to him. Talk to him. He wants to be in relationship with you, right? Don't try and hold things back. Lean into that relationship. And through all of that, through that heart softening, right, through us saying, God, I want your way, not my way, wisdom will come, as will the fear of the Lord. So what does the yoke come for those that seek and gain godly wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Proverbs 2, 7 to 10, as we continue on with that original passage, says this, he holds success in store for the upright. Hey, this is the good part of the story right here. I'm going to say that again. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who, whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair. Every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Who wants pleasantness? Pleasance. Is that a word? Who wants to be pleasant inside? How does that sound, right? If you're pleasant inside, I promise you'll exude that out. So God's promise in this passage is to shield and protect you, to posture you for the success he's purposed you for, to provide you discernment, understanding, knowledge, and contentment. Heavenly Father wants us to walk in godly wisdom, and in doing so, reap godly rewards. Furthermore, godly wisdom and understanding are not meant to be kept for personal gain, right? That's where discipling comes in, but rather to be shared to help those around us grow, to allow our community to experience the goodness of God, to model a righteous lifestyle worthy of our Heavenly Father. Who would agree that our community needs to see that, right? Our community needs to see that in action, not just words, walk, right? Not just platitudes, an active testimony, how you do life. That's what, ex- that's what uh, initially extends to people. That's what connects them. And then it's the Holy Spirit that draws them, right? So it's important that we gain our wisdom and that we follow Heavenly Father and then that we extend that out to our community. I just want to invite the, the worship team back to the stage. And I want to read a short quote from Warren Wierby. He's a Bible teacher and writer from the mid-1900s. This is what he wrote. He wrote, the important thing isn't how long we live, but how we live. Not the length, but the depth of life. Fools wait in the shadows, but wise people launch out into the deep and let God give them his very best. Who here wants God to give them his very best? Anybody here? I know I do. I know I'm seeking after that in in my life. Does that mean that we will never face adversity or make mistakes? No. No, absolutely not. However, God promises to be with us, guiding us and protecting us as we walk in the wisdom he provides. Amen? His promises are yes and amen. Perhaps today you feel that no matter how hard you try on your own, no matter how much effort you expend to navigate life, things are chaotic and seem out of control. Maybe on the drive here today, you're thinking, God, I don't know if I can do this. This is crazy. There's so much going on. Life is coming at me from a million directions. Perhaps others of us have chosen to live our lives in a safe manner, allowing God to impact you on your terms, not his. Maybe something inside of you is yearning for more than a safe and simple journey through this life. Something purpose-filled that can only be found by being led by the wisdom of God. If any of that describes you, I'd love to pray with you that God will give you the strength and that you'll have the boldness to begin to relinquish the foolishness of this world for the wisdom of God. If that's you today, I'm not going to ask you to come up front, but just slip your hand in the air. If that resonated with you and you'd like me to pray and just include you in that prayer, just slip your hand in the air for a sec because I'd love to pray for God's wisdom in your life. Amen. Amen. Father God, I thank you so much 
that you love us deeply, deeply enough not to leave us to our own devices, deeply enough to uh, have a future, a plan, and a purpose for us. Father, I just pray that uh, as we go about our lives, we would be so aware of the plans that you have for us, that we would be persistent, that we, we would be intentional about getting to know you more, getting to know you deeper, giving over those areas in our lives that need to be given over to you, crying out in desperation, rekindling the fear of the Lord in our life, gaining understanding and knowledge, and through that, godly wisdom. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan that extends beyond what we think of ourselves. The credit we give ourselves. Father, you've got something far greater for us. So as we submit our lives to you today, as we give these things over to you today, Father God, I just pray you do a work in each of us. I pray even this week, God, that you would just even set up divine encounters. I pray that there be encouragement. Holy Spirit, just do a work. We thank you and love you. We give you the glory today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Why don't we all stand up and we'll do another worship song or two before you go on with your day.
one more song today since we have time, but if you do have to leave early or when you leave, if you're a mom, we have a little gift for you, some chocolates. Who doesn't like chocolate? So make sure that before you go out the doors down in the entryway, you get one of those. Just want to make sure we don't forget to tell you that. that you would give us wisdom and understanding and knowledge. God, we need your help so much when it comes to raising our kids, when it comes to building a home and building a life for our kids. We pray, God, that you would help us as moms and dads to keep you at the center. God, help us to keep you number one in our lives, in our homes, despite all the pressures tugging at us, pulling at us to prioritize other things instead of you. God, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to stay strong, stay firm, that you would be the foundation and the center of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. <laughs>